one in red, the other in blue, both gunning for gold in Gibraltar. Jason Shaw against David al -Kady. We know that Ted Lerner believes al -Kady will win. I'm the opposite. Jason Shaw, I think we'll just about well, tip this, yeah. but yep. what do I know? Race straight, Phil, winner breaks. It's about making a good start, freezing your opponent out of the match, gluing him to his chair. First block drawn by Arcady. Look at the cue ball. Perfect speed control. He'll get the first break. <coughs> first rack, race to eight. Winner breaks. David Arcady the break. Just taking some water on board. He's hoping at the, the end of the match, water will change to champagne. Oh, if he wins, Phil, that would be a huge party. I'm thinking back to Kielce in Poland, the World Pool Masters. Cue ball scratch. Lost it. It went forward, but then it got kicked. And what, a, what an unfortunate roll for David Elkady. Yeah, he's just flicked off the, the green six. That was enough. We did the commentary then in Kielce, the year that uh, that four Polish players were in the quarterfinals, two in the final. Yes, with Karol Skowerski, the man who ultimately grabbed the silverware. So I'm thinking back to that year. David Alkaide okay, playing so good. Jason Shaw over hitting that shot on a draw shot with an angle if you want the rotation to grab the cue ball you need to hit soft I think a little too much adrenaline in his arm there understandably like the entrance in the Extension arena cold. in an ambience like this gives you a lot of adrenaline a heightened pulse. Looking to play a one real kick shot. A three quarter ball hit. Send it towards the nine. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. And that's why I like kick shots. David Alcade in his chair, you know, getting ready for for a different shot than this. Some folks get their kicks on Route Stanton 66. Cole. Alex Lely gets his kicks from kicks. <laughs> he sees part of the five. But he doesn't like the odds when playing for a direct hit. An open ball, hand on table, when Jason Shaw <laughs> is coming into bat. That is ominous news for the guy he's playing. The seven ball is somewhat in the way if he chooses to play with top spin, but he's addressing the cue ball low. Creamed it in. Good angle on the six. No angle. Straight in. He can play a stop shot here or draw back slightly. Punch it over. So confident. Power pull. A little bit of crashing and banging in this rather large hall we're in. But nothing could disrupt Shaw's concentration. Jason Shaw off and running. 1 0 ahead. One thing we know for certain, regardless of the results, 
Alex, is that it's the 24th edition of the Dafferbet Whirlpool Masters, this. The 17th European winner is going to be crowned. And you are one of the 17. Yeah, and I cherish that. Even though it's a long time ago, when we had Gilders and Nokias, I said on day one. Doesn't matter the currency for Jason Shaw, whether it's pounds, dollars, euros, <laughs> he just accumulates. Yeah, everything. He touches, turns into gold, it seems, over the past 12 months. Kirak two, Jason Shaw to break. Breaking Leading from one rack to the nil. right side. Over the three days, the other side has been the better side to break from. Doesn't matter. He makes the corner ball fly in. A difficult shot. A shot nonetheless on the one ball. And a two ball in the center of the table. Position will be difficult. Because the two does not go to the same pocket. Beautiful. So clean. He's playing the two to the side. And he's pointing to the three ball. That's where the cue ball will head to. He cut it thin, the two ball. I think he f expected to run into the three ball. He can cut it to the side pocket. And he played it. He's left a shot to David. He plays so quick. Angry to have left the table so prematurely, but sometimes when you look at a, a nine ball pool table, what can be very deceptive, how difficult it is to pot balls to the middle pocket. Extension cold. Question is to what extent the nine is hampering David's queuing. No problem there. Ooh. A poor delivery. Totally cute across the ball. His bridge hand that you want to be solid and firm and stable. Pulling away. Yes, the right shoulder in that shot. Oh, look at this. A kick shot. With the rail first, clipped the three ball on the way out. Nice touch. Good defense. The three in the middle of the table. Makes it a difficult ball to hit. Using a method here. There are many methods to measure uh, a kick shots on Extension a pool table. Cold. So the three in the cue ball, same distance off the rail, makes it relatively easy to find the exact aiming point on the rail. Contact made, but safety not achieved. Yeah, I think he tried to hit it a little thicker. And the cue ball would have stayed, ended up closer to the short rail. Needs to stand still. He's nervous. He's nervous, you can tell by the way he's stroking the shots. 
Not as sound a delivery as in the semi-final. Not yet, not yet. He's still settling in. It's not said that he will play with topspin to go to the short rail. Some players would prefer to hit lower and stroke the shot. Like this. <coughs> Under pressure, players do not like to float the ball. As normal, Alex, you've been perceptive here. There's no doubt he is feeling it. He's putting a ball in the pocket because he will hit this with speed. And once during this tournament, on a shot from Wojtek Shevchek, the ball went in, waited a second and then popped out. Yes, and it was Jason Shaw who was the beneficiary. Come on, Come on they say. First rack for David from Spain. Easy to say that 90% of all the spectators here are in favor of David. A good rack. He fought his way through it. I have the impression, Phil, that David is playing quicker. Now I'm sure that he's playing quicker than in the semi final. He played against Albin. Albin plays a little a slower game that's a pitfall if you're playing against a quick player Shaw is like ultra quick he blitzes nine ball racks the pitfall is that that you get influence in your rhythm so David should be aware of this yeah I think it's generally assumed that if one player dictates the pace it's if He's quite a, a ponderous, methodical player, and he slows the other one down. But it works the other way as well. We've seen it plenty of times in the past. Thank you, Rack 3. David Alcady to break. 1-1. One, one. Not too thin. Three-quarter ball hit. That's good. That's good. Good cue ball control. But no ball down. At least the one is stone cold safe. The 5 7 is not aligned towards the pocket. The 4 is tied up with the 8 ball. We'll see a lot of pool playing in this rack. A containing safety by Jason Shaw. Not doing anything special, just not leaving a shot and giving him distance. If you don't know what to do, give him nine feet. I like a double bank here. The one towards the 4 8. Now, most of the time. If al Qaeda left the one ball, he would be really worried. There will be concern there, but as Alex said, this table is really awkward. It's awkward, it's awkward, but Jason Shaw was looking at that 5-7. If the balls are touching or almost touching, it's possible to throw the second ball. Extension so maybe call. he can manipulate the 7. Possibly, if he leaves himself an angle on the two, he could try and open the 4-8. Okay, that's one problem solved. But solving one problem, he created another. He doesn't seem to have a clear view of the two ball. Oh, 
<laughs> Bend it like Beckham. How about shape it like Shaw? <laughs> nice one. Oh, look at this. This is it's 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 so nice if you have a champion player in form. There's no doubt he's he, you know, he sees the ball, he thinks about what to do. There's no negativity. Now he can kick. The shot I like here is kick and stick. So hit the rail first. Okay. You know, this is good. It's a snooker. But it's an easy hit for David. And possibly when hitting the four on the right side for us, he can throw in the eight ball. But with a kick and stick, he would have played a cue ball safety. More aggressive. Oh, he got lucky here, David. He played to make the eight, but he overspun the ball. And the leave behind the 5-7 is fortunate. <coughs> he can play a ticky. Short rail, long rail. Or like this. Nice shot. You see how fast they're playing? I mean, David is a, is a quick player. As long as it doesn't harm your uh, shot, well, your your shot selection. Nothing harmful about Just that. that. I move on. Throwing that back. Well, I mm, make sure I hit. Okay. Nigel wants to see if it was short rail, long so rail. Then the four, the cushion, okay? and they will look if the four went back to the rail, to the long rail. Actually, it didn't seem like it. Yeah, it did not go back to the rail, the four. After contact, a ball, any ball needs to hit the rail. Foul, foul shot, foul shot, ball in hand. Well, what a very good decision from Nigel Reese. Every credit for that. I really thought that the the ping four ball had made contact with the side cushion, but clearly on the replay it did not. It's it's a bad roll for Jason Shaw because he played to hit it over two rails, and then there was half a millimeter where this could happen. And so being in jail for Al Qaeda turn into at the table with a clear chance. Now, in a, you know, Jason Shaw uh, has not been lucky here, but if he had kick, kicked to stick the cue ball behind the eight before that safety on the four, it would have been much, much more difficult for David to hit the ball. It's also very much a game of chance. Do you give your opponent the chance to get lucky? Or do you stick him behind the ball? Extension call. It should go, of course. But after what we've seen today, I'm not going to say it's a formality. He'll stroke it in. I expect him to stroke it in instead of shooting plain ball. There was a heavy contact, Phil. 100%. And now al qaeda has got a heavy heart. A thumpy sound. You could see the nine ball turn. Well, would you believe it? Jason Shaw again cleans up a mess 
Al-Qaeda misses the nine ball, as Pagulayan did in the quarterfinals. This is earlier in the match. Shaw, 2-1 up. to one straight in the face two balls down and so close to the two ball but I don't think he can pocket it nothing on Will this be playing on his mind, David al -Qaedi. Alex Lely thought he might have suffered from a, a skid, a, a kick. It certainly seemed to straighten slightly, yeah. I don't think he's happy with the contact. Not attacking the two ball. A good safety. So, Alex, is he experienced enough not to dwell on that mistake? <laughs> oh, difficult question, Phil. This is this is this is what professionals do. It's it's all about the mental game. Sure, you need to be skillful. Extension called. But making that mental reset is important. But the bigger the 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 moment. And the bigger the occasion, the more difficult it is to stay fresh, light-hearted. Okay, he's leaving this on. This is a perfect table for David Al-Qaeda to forget that missed nine ball. Nothing really difficult to do for him. Straight on the four will leave him right for the five. And if he's straight on the five, automatic position on the seven he'll have. Yes, you can't erase what's gone before. You can't make up for it. But you can soothe the hurt. And immediately getting back on level terms would do just that. No reason why he can't. Top sport is about taking blows, taking punches without getting destabilized morally or mentally. And Jason Shaw knows that. He's patient. Do no other than wait. The initial four racks of the final are shared. Nothing to choose between them. And you know, it's been that kind of tournament. No one in this tercentenary sports hall in Gibraltar would be surprised if it went right to the wire. I would love that. We've not had a, a Whirlpool Masters final go the distance since 2005 in Doncaster, and that was a remarkable match. That was the final when Rodney Morris had one hand on the trophy, but in the end was beaten 8-7 by Raj Hundal. Yeah, I was there. Hondal was on fire. Nice rhythm player, Raj. He's not super consistent. But if he gets going, it's uh, spectacular how he can play. One thing I, I'm sure will be in 
Shaw's mind and very much to his benefit. Ted made the point. Kirak five. David Alcady to break. Two two. Got kissed three times to cue ball. He has difficulty on the break to to not hit the one ball too thin. It's always going forward with a thicker hit on the one ball. The cue ball would be slow, drifting to the long rail. This uh, is a tricky shot. The double kiss looms large. Missed the double kiss, but did not miss the nine ball. But maybe it helped. He sees enough. He can pocket the two ball, Jason Shaw. But needs to bridge over the six. Needs to Bridge. cut the four. <coughs> now, if he would go, go over the angle, short rail, long rail, the five doesn't go to the corner, so he needs to kill the cue ball, keep it on that side. Okay. Coming around. Works just as well like this. The eight blocks the path for the seven to the side pocket. He's somewhat constricted in what he can do with the seven. It passes the nine. So he can draw back here. It's tight. Nice. You can note that Shaw is not always stroking big on shots. Sometimes he's very compact. <coughs> and so for the third time in this title showdown, Jason Shaw hits the front. He was 1-0. He was 2-1 ahead, and now it's 3-2. I, um, I think David Okaide well, should be you know, blaming himself for that mistake. He was quick to decide. It was a very difficult angle, and I know he knows his three-cushion game. He's, he's a good safety player. The shot he tried was very, very difficult. The safety on the two ball, that is. That was the first shot he got after the break. Very little room to work with. After the break, the players get double time. Twice the time to decide what to do. Thank you, rack six. Jason Shaw to break, leading three racks to two. Shaw looking for a two rack gap for the first time. Oh, and the little nudge on the seven, onto the one, has worked a treat for him. Yeah, with the pop break hit when they hit the one ball full often the one ball comes to rest between the first and second diamond on the short rail but this time the seven helped him out draw back for the two or using the full pocket playing with top spin Very efficient solution here. He 
he has so much confidence in his pocketing ability that his shot selection works differently. He likes minimal movement of the cue ball. I do too, but I don't pocket like him. And with him, that swagger, that total self-belief isn't built on bravado. It's built on a, a bedrock of genuine confidence. And again, one ball in the pocket to avoid the rebound. And even if it happens one in a thousand shots, you don't want it to happen here now. This is a nice angle. This looks like a, a difficult position, but this is how you want it. A lot of angles so you can soft stroke it. Look how clean he hit that shot. Beautiful. Hitting the back of the pocket. And that easy cue power, he can maneuver a wide ball around so beautifully. Smooth. A break and run for Jason Shaw, extending the lead. Two wrecks now, four to two. Yes, and that means he's halfway to the title. Two on the trot, Shaw in full flow. And the byword for sure as he breaks off in rack number seven, consolidation. He's getting a lot of value on the break. Popping the cue ball. A square hit on the one. And the eight sits with the one ball. Blocking the path to the pocket. Tantalizing break off that. Two thirds of the job done. Ball in pocket. Clear shot to the one, but the problem is that intervening black ball. Now David can clip the one. Very thin hit. I think on average, Phil. If we, if we would ha have the opportunity to measure it, I think on average David is three seconds, four seconds quicker per shot than in his match against Albin. And the one ball sits. Not everything he touches turns into gold. A sitter for David, but the difficulty here is the position of the two. One corner blocked by the six and possibly the other one by the nine. Extension called. Snooker players and pool players have much in common. One thing, selective memory when it comes to fortune. Yes, he was unlucky there, but... I call it the automatic ego defense system at work. It was always going to be difficult. Now, he could look at the 2-9 carom. Because it's close to being on. Maybe the 2 3 combination and the 2 9 carom. He played a beautiful carom against Shane. There it is. There it is. No, it's sitting, but he did make the three. Pressure pot now on the two. Big shot coming up. He can stun to the long rail. He won't scratch. Mm, 
a nervy stroke. Has to elevate the back of the cue, hit downward with right spin. Doesn't have to be straight in on the five. Go towards the third diamond on the law, right rail. Coming out. It's looking good for Team Spain. Very soft. Or using the rails. Can play two rails. Like this. He likes to punch. And it's nice to watch a player who, who, who gets that extra rail. Instead of killing the ball all the time. He's going to hit this with speed. Straight draw or stun to the rail. Straight draw. Pegging him back. One rack. Well, Katie put the nine ball there. Unmissable. Once again, David Al Katie shows his tenacious side. 4 3. Good final in play right now and one aspect of this match we need to discuss Alex is the fact that if al Qaeda were to win his chances of returning to the European Moscone Cup team in around 10 months time would be significantly boosted made his debut in 2006 he would love to be part of that European juggernaut again same goes for Jason Shaw of course but with his Superb CV, hard to imagine he, he won't be selected. Good point, Phil. And I think Moscone Cup in the minds of the players from both sides of the Atlantic, rather like in golf these days, the Ryder Cup's always in the mind of the leading golfers from those continents. They want to be there. Thank you, Rack 8. David Alcady to break, trailing three racks to four. Oh, this is a good roll for him if the five doesn't spoil the party. Didn't, but look at the eight. The only possibility, but I don't think it's on, is a kiss shot on the eight. Had the eight been maybe one inch to the left he could hit the two into the eight and make it go in the side pocket now it's not on what can he do push out cold a safety he could have played here was draw back behind the five and hit the two into the eight. But he opted to play a push out. It's a difficult, Extension difficult cold. position. And I say that because look at this. A Shaw can hit both sides of the of the two ball. There's no He's bank the on, piece. he would double kiss. So, if he plays object ball first, Al-Qaeda, he'll send the two towards the other short rail. An aggressive safety because he played cue ball. He controlled the cue ball. The three is helping. The two is at a perfect distance from the rail to play a kick and stick. Full ball hit. But he attacked the two, he tried to make it. 
pretty safe. Pretty good roll there. Bank to two back up. Hide behind to five. Checking the cue ball with a lot of right spin. And he's putting the handcuffs on. He finally has got him hooked. Snookert behind the five. It's a very difficult position to make some, something happen. Extension cold. Went down to eight, nine seconds on the clock and then decided he needed the extension. So another 30 seconds granted. So he measured where to go on the second rail, on the long rail. But look at the cue ball, because it will bend after the short rail. Difficult to judge. Nice try. Good effort. Good effort. But David gets a shot, gets rewarded for his safeties. And really, this chance no more than he deserved. He will need to cover a lot of distance to run this rack, because he needs to go from the 5 to the 6 and back to the 7. And then... the 8 to the side or the corner. Wrong side of the 4. One rail, top spin. That's a good angle. Can he reach it? I know Chang could. Okay, crossing the table. Over the side pocket. No, he played one rail. He played one rail. I thought he would be playing two rails. Going to the second long rail and then towards the six. I think it was a, a little twitch in the delivery. Nice recovery shot. Spun the ball. He's almost there. Now he's looking at the eight to the side pocket. If he likes that. Oh. Well, that was one of those shots where he hit it so badly in the end, it worked out okay in terms of not leaving anything on. Wow. He's playing quick. Too quick. Anxiously trying to find a rhythm. Shaw did not hide behind, did not find the hiding behind the eight. The seven goes. So I think Al Qaeda will draw back. Oh, he's getting twitchy. Tension coursing through his veins. He's a bundle of nervous energy. But he's also back on level terms. Alcade equalised at 1-1 and 2-2. He's now tied the scores at 4-4. So much at stake in this particular contest. <laughs> oh, man, this is the biggest match of his life. Look at the prize money. $20,000 to the winner, 10 to the runner-up, both good paydays. But of course, it's not just about finance. Let's not 
try and kid ourselves. The money is very big, but also it's the kudos and what it could lead to in terms of other things in your pool career. Confidence, as we've talked about, the Moscone Cup. For David Alcady, it would be enormous. Thank you, Rack 9. David yeah, Alcady, the professional break. career, four, four. it's all about building momentum. A streak of successes. And the living proof of that is Jason Shaw. Success breeds success. Breeds confidence, breeds more success. Well, this is a final where we're not seeing dry breaks crop up. What we are seeing is breaks that look OK, and then all of a sudden you realise there's a snag. Yeah. Push out cold. A difficult push out. I would definitely look to tie something up here like this. Good shot from David. Now, a good shot here is to kick short rail and then clipping the one. Oh, he could hit it fat enough to draw to the long rail. <coughs> he can cut this, David. But can he avoid contacting the six? Two passes the eight, as you can see there. You play the cue ball to the long rail, then speed it up with the right spin. Extension cold. Now the four doesn't go to the lower left hand pocket. So he needs speed here. Oh, he checked the cue ball. Nice, nice, look. He was in a difficult position on the two. He used it. And now has a proper angle on the four to open the five. Would have liked to be a diamond closer, though, to the four. Almost. A quarter tip, too low on the cue ball there. Too much draw. Sure, <laughs> ready to pass. A containing shot, played to not lose here. Instead of trying to make something happen, trying to play an Efren, an Effie. Waiting shot he played. But Shaw's not waiting. Look at this. He cut the paint off the ball. Super shot. He'd be good at shaving Palmer ham. Likes a thin cut. Oops. But there, didn't bring home the bacon. <laughs> that, Alex, was a surprising miss. Yeah, what tells us he's feeling the heat as well. That's a good thing for David. Sometimes when you get nervous, you get so, so aware of your own problems that you forget to look at your opponent, that you, that you fail to see that he's feeling the same heat. So in that sense, the miss on the seven helps David. He 
He's already missed one nine ball in this final in the third rack. But that was an easier pot, and it's into the heart of the pocket. This is a first. al in front. As with every match here, the target is eight racks. And we've gone full circle. There's Francisco Sanchez Ruiz from Mercia, who was involved in our very first match of this tournament here on Friday night. He was ten. beaten by the then David defending Arcane champion, Shane Van Boning, here supporting his fellow countryman, who's now breaking off in rack number 10. Needs to make that corner ball. Needs to make that corner ball. Did not. As in the previous break. Now it's difficult if you're if you're breaking the whole tournament from from the left side, from one side, with good results. It's difficult to not be stubborn. But Jason is making easy balls on the other side. I would copy him. He's getting the best results. Top left pocket needs to elevate, hit below center, and stun towards the eight ball. He'll go there automatically with a center ball hit. Wow. Well, he made the ball, but he's losing his finesse difficult position he needs to travel more four doesn't pass the eight Listen, actually he played a real good shot there come around the eight two rails he'll be good for the five he's back in position stopped in time the cue ball one more rotation and he would have to play a very difficult shot now. <coughs> Maybe in the future with virtual reality, people get the chance to be to beat Jason Shaw for one wreck, just to experience what, what it would feel like to be an autopilot. <laughs> How's this? Unbelievable. Makes it look easy at a time when nothing's easy. Five, five. This is brewing up a treat. Unbelievable shot making from Jason Shaw. If he sees the ball and there's an inch between the balls, he'll make it. That's what it looks like. And not because he did miss the seven in the previous rack. But such an instinctive player. Pure feel. <coughs> Thing is, with this format, when the scores are level, it's never truly level because obviously the guy who's just won the previous rack gets to break, and so he has the edge. And it's an edge worth mentioning. Yeah, big edge since he's making rack 11, balls on Jason every Shorter break. break five, five. the cue ball. Getting better positions. I say this is where David needs to break from the next time he gets to break. Jason Shaw mishit the break there. <coughs> he has no shot on the two. 
Many balls clustered together, though. Usually, that makes it easier to hide. Yes, they talk about traffic, don't they? That's pool congestion for you. Yeah, but in the same way, all these balls give David a pretty good chance to resave Jason Shaw. I'd say, let me say something. Extension cold. If he would play this shot ten times, I think David would resave him three to four times. So many trees to hide behind. Four out of ten. That's what I think. Ball in hand. Okay, it's a pity. Start the clock, please. Worst case scenario. Ball in hand pull. You gotta like that for a 6 5 lead. Hold the cue ball there. He's left handed, so the way he played it, he can stay where he was. Clip it, check it. Natural angle for the six. Go to the long rail. Or, if he doesn't like that, punch it. Go long, short rail. Long, short. But every time you travel, you run the risk of losing position. The more you do, the more can go wrong. But he's a field player. And he likes to punch the ball. This Extension is cold. a very testy shot. In between the 7-8 looks the better shot to play. On. Yeah! Unbelievable. I'm lost for words, really. It just keeps happening. Can he keep going to the well? <laughs> Grazing the eight ball, just coaxed it in. Oh, how can David digest this? He was getting ready to get to the table. James Nisbet isn't the only lucky man. So too is Jason Shaw. Six, five ahead, and what a fluke. Yeah, he lost position, missed the six, but made it. <laughs> Looked on the alignment he was overcutting it, so there it's missed. Eight ball, thank you very much. It's part of the game. It's part of the game, but he he must try to only think about his next shot, the break, the next rack. Don't think back. But he plays so quick, there's no time to think back. The thing is, we've talked about luck so often with him during this tournament, because it's true. But the the thing you've got to bear in mind as well, he's, rack 12, he's phenomenally talented. So six what racks a to potent five. cocktail that is. Corner ball came high. And the wreck didn't open up particularly well. And maybe that's the pool gods saying, you know, in this game, luck is always rationed. So a 1 4 combination would make the one ball after contacting the four travel towards the top pocket.
Good control. Now the seven goes to the lower left hand pocket. But the six is in a difficult position for uh, David because if he shapes up for the two with too much angle, he would have trouble avoiding the six if he wants to go two rails or avoiding the eight, nine if he goes one. So this is a good shot. Very nice. Speed control. No problem whatsoever in avoiding the eight, nine and six. can go around the three ball or in between the five eight and again we see how the check side doesn't really grab off of the short rail would have liked to be straighter on the three Sword uh, was it was a shot to nothing. I think he also played to to clip that eight ball, hit the top side, but in such a way th that he would clip it or not hit it. But to always have a shot on the five. I don't see him attempting to open the eight nine from the six. That wouldn't make sense. He's looking from the left side or from the right Extension side. Extension cold. I like it. Personally, I would prefer to play the six with a low right, going to where the cue ball is now, and then pocketing the seven to the right, going short rail, long rail towards the corner pocket. And then he'll find the eight, nine. So this, this is what he plays. No, it's not what he, yeah. He can play to land below the eight, or he can play to open the eight, nine. Most important, don't miss the seven. Nice. Needs to travel, very nice. Great shot. The Matador is fighting. Oh, he went to the side pocket. Beautiful. Great out by David Alcaide. Leveling the score once again. 6-6. Six, six. Yes, it really is a display of heart from Alcaide. Pool parity achieved in Gibraltar. A race to two. The race to two for the title. I think of the two, it's Al Qaeda is looking a little more pensive, understandably wound up. Shaw seems to be sitting there looking more relaxed, but you know, how you look can sometimes mm. belie your actual emotions. But I must say, the last wreck that Al-Qaeda played, it was very clean. Clean cubal positions. And Jason Shaw, maybe his pocketing ability doesn't get affected by nerves, but maybe his judgment and shot selection. He's playing a little wild, Jason Shaw. Okay, rack 13. David al so break. again, Al-Qaeda breaking from the left side. Twice already a dry break. Needs to power up. And powering up, he did. He did make the corner ball. And difficult to see if he can cut the one ball in. I don't think so. No shot. Oh, yes, a shot. 
He looked at the potting angle. Relatively still on that one, which was a prerequisite. Yeah, now he's taking a little more time. He's made it. Not hangs it over the pocket. It's the same shot as the one he missed in the first rack. He was still on the one, but not still on the two. And after a miss like that, he's lucky to even get back to the table in this match. If he plays with right spin, he has a chance to make the nine as well. A chance. Not in, but ready. Lovely. We must recall he missed a, a seven down the opposite rail in rack nine. No miss there, though. Oh, yeah! Jason Shaw on the threshold of yet another major title in the world of nine ball pool. But you know, David Alcady will be feeling just as blue as the ball he missed. Jason Shaw just looking for one more thrust to get over the line. But you know, they say winning the, the last frame or the last rack, never easy. Now, in the middle there with the glasses, that's Jason Shaw's wife, Ara, and on the right hand side of her, Jason's sister. So, Alcady's got plenty of support. But Shaw doesn't lack either. Jason Shaw's last break in this World Pool Masters. He got Thank to the hill. 14. He's played himself in a, into break, a winning position. To six. Now he needs to clinch it. Nine balls to go. Three down on the break. A monstrous break. And look at the 8 6. They crossroads. But did they open up enough for him to get to the three ball? No shot on. He can get to the three ball. But it doesn't seem that he can hit the left side of the ball. Yeah, good shot. He found a way to attack the ball with defense. Had he made it, he probably would have been out. Cue ball. And there it is. Jason Shaw, come on down. The red three ball is on. On a day when the weather has been a lot like Scotland here, a Scottish champion could be about to emerge. You need speed here. Oh. 
This is tricky, Phil. Super difficult. Needs to avoid the right hand pocket. Phil. This, we have to bring this man to the casino and bet with him. Oh, he can't go wrong. Extension cold. Oh, this was always a difficult shot. He needed to jack up to avoid the scratch. It was the five where he went wrong. The position. Now he, David needs to hit the ball. At least hit the ball. Good speed. Good speed. You can touch, feel the tension out there. Oh, difficult stroke. He's not one to float the ball. He doesn't like to float the ball. He's feeling the heat and the whole match, he's punching balls in. But yet again, with it. It's truly extraordinary to miss successive six balls and on both occasions to leave his opponent hooked. A good jump, a great jump. He made the six, but the next shot might even be harder. This is the one he's supposed to make. Nice. Oh, what a positive stroke. What a positive shot by David. Yes, showing a lot of fight and determination. How can you possibly deny David Alcady this? He's looked Jason Shaw in the eye, he's looked Lady Luck in the eye and said, forget it, I'm not about to capitulate. 7-7, the most fitting conclusion to the tournament imaginable. Jason Shaw had good fortune there, not once but twice, but in the end, it mattered not. My heart rate is up, I don't know, 40 beats per minute. Imagine how they're feeling. Look at this. That's the first fluke snooker on the six. Having missed it by, one has to say, pretty much a mile. Here's the second. al was entitled to feel cursed at this moment. His fans were raising their arms in the air. What's happening, they were saying. But al got down and played the jump shot of his life. Yeah, and I like that seven as well. Hey, the stroke on the seven was, was enormous. Like last time, Final rack. a little more David speed. The break. Maybe 80, 85%. Three-quarter ball hit. Lost the cue ball. Where's the one ball going to sit? It's ready. Vamos, they say. Now, from where the two is, he would have a shot on the three. That means that he wants to get straight on the two. So he can stop. And from the three, a natural angle to get to the four. This is the key shot. Draw back a couple of inches. Nice. More than nice. Perfect. 
stop shot good enough no not good enough perfect we're nervous in here what must he be thinking The difficulty cold. now, this amount of pressure, is to make enough of a backswing. Well, he's gambled a little there when the, the beef started, didn't want to be disturbed, so took his extension. No safety net. Yeah. Clean. Now, if he stuns the cue ball, he'll go to the long rail in between the center pocket and the third diamond. Just needs to come out, out of the rail. Not try to get too close to the four. Oh, he's drawing. Coming over the side pocket. Oh no. Needs to stop. The last two World Pool Masters finals were runaways. Shane Van Boning dominating both. This hasn't been a runaway, it's been a classic. Around 6-9. Doesn't want to land on the 50 yards line. The mind's playing tricks. If this was the the club back in Malaga, no sweat. But this is for all the marbles. To the side pocket. Cue ball needs to stay away from the rail. Don't applaud yet. This is what it all comes down to, Phil. He's lost the cue ball. He has to come with it now. The shot of his life. They call it in the States a gut check. What a shot. Look at the green, almost jumping back onto the table. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, he's got it. What a fighter. <coughs> of a dream dynamite David Alcady glory in Gibraltar Jason Shaw denied at the death and his Spanish fans they are ecstatic Alex that was one pool match yeah very nice this you know to win in front of your of your friends and family that, that that's the best thing this is the biggest title in his life. It's like, I'm lost for words, Phil. You must feel sorry for Jason Shaw. He entertained us so royally throughout the three days, came so close, and it's a, a bitter defeat to take. But the champion is David Alcady. He came close in 2007 in Holland, lost in the final to Thomas Engert, but he didn't lose tonight. Well, 16 of the best players in the world gathered here on Friday night in Gibraltar. European and world champions, the greatest players in the world of nine ball. And David Al-Qaeda has won the trophy. And he's beaten legends every step of the way. Look at the emotion. The list of previous champions reads like a who's who of modern pool legends. And overcome by emotion, David Al-Qaeda can add his name to the list. And these are brilliant scenes aren't they because this just shows the emotion that he's had to go through he's had to fight through a quarter final a semi-final and a final today it's been so hard to mentally and physically stay on track in a cold it's got to be said in a cold victoria stadium here but he's managed to stay focused all the way through the day 
and uh, David Al-Qaeda is now the champion. Well, we're pretty much uh, ready for the prize presentation. And we'd like to uh, introduce the presentation party now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to present the trophy, the Gibraltar Minister for Culture, Media, Youth and Sport, the Honourable Stephen Linares. Well, it's been a great final and a big hand, ladies and gentlemen, for the runner-up, Jason Shaw. And now, the winner of the 2017 World Pool Masters, David Al-Qaeda. Congratulations, David. Come on over. Let's have another chat. Absolutely brilliant. Do you want to park yourself here in front of the uh, in front of the table? This was the moment that you did it. How does it feel to be the World Pool Masters champion? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't speak too much. I know half. <laughs> uh, I don't play very good in the final. I think I miss. Two or three easy ball, but it's too much pressure. I have a little lucky for maybe the the best or the best two player in the world now is Jason. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Was that jump shot the best shot of your career? Would you say? Uh, every, I think <laughs> the last six ball is my my best shot. The the jump shot. It's the, it's the shot, not half the other option. I have lucky I make the ball. Um, just, just talk us through this jump shot, because it was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm unbelievable. I don't know. I, I say this trophy is, is for my children, for my Daniela. Te quiero. Oh, that's fantastic. And we saw at the end you were in tears, and you've obviously got a lot of emotion now. How much does this mean to you to win this trophy tonight? <laughs> I, don't I don't say I don't understand English now. <laughs> Sorry, I say very, very thank you for much room for invitation for me for this tournament. Very, very, very thank you for every fans. Um, um, I hope. Uh, play next year. See you next year. <laughs> I can guarantee you will be here next year. Okay. <laughs> More fun. <laughs> Defending champion. Um, stay there a second. Let's have a quick word with Jason. Where he is, Jason. Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Jason, congratulations on a brilliant final. It just didn't quite work out for you at the end there, did it? I had two chances, you know, I blew it, so. I didn't deserve to win after having two chances, you know. Um, but he played good, you know. He's, I watched all his matches all week. He played pretty solid and I had a chance to win and I didn't take it. So he deserved to win in the end. It seemed like you were improving all the way through the tournament and you, you got to 7 6 up there. It looked like you, you were in the driving seat. Well, as I said, I haven't played for a couple of weeks. So coming here and obviously, first couple of matches, just trying to get in stroke, you know what I mean? Um, but as the tournament went on, I got better. But, um, you know, I, as I said, I had chances there and just sort of didn't really take them at the end. I just was a little bit pumped, you know. Um, but that's the way it goes, you know. You win some, you lose some. Well done. Congratulations on a good performance in this tournament. And one more question for the victor. How are you going to celebrate now? <laughs> It's secret. <laughs> it's a secret. No, it's 
He's going to buy me drinks all night. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. This is unbelievable. Everybody knows who is Jason, this unbelievable player, but it's better for the people. Thank you, Jason. It's special. Well done. I'll go to the discotheque. <laughs> Everybody, come on! <laughs> ah, sorry for for my my boss, Calvo. Esta va para allí. <laughs> David Alcaide, ladies and gentlemen, give him a big hand. He is the World Pool Masters champion. <laughs>